the leader of our time, the man with wisdom, the man with wisdom, the leader of our party, the flag bearer of the new patriotic party, the man to break the hate, your vice president, God, my vice possible. president, our vice president, our incoming God, president. May I introduce to you His Excellency, God. Dr. Mamudu Farao. Choboy, Choboy, now the leader of the youth, the man mobilizing all of us, is going to give us the opening remarks with a sound of applause. Let's invite Salam Mustafa. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live on GBC, so please, and all other sister platforms, do not loiter in the front. Thank you. Choboy. 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 Chaboy, 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 Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, the presidential candidate for the new patriotic party. And inshallah, the next president of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Let me stand on all existing protocols. Choboy, my friends and colleagues, I bring you special greetings. Assalamu alaikum to all of you. I'm very happy seeing all of you this afternoon. We have had some time together. And I've seen the commitment and energy you have shown and the love and commitment for His Excellency the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. I want to urge you, if you are here and you have not put your name in the voters register yet, and I can tell you that your mission is not complete yet, because for all the energy we have shown to make it count, we have to ensure that we register and vote come December 7th Boom, 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 boom for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to be president of the Republic of Ghana. The Electoral Commission is currently doing a limited voters registration exercise. If you have not registered yet, today, from here, go to the nearest Electoral Commission district office. Or tomorrow, make sure that you get your name in the voters register. From now all the way to the 27th of this month, the Electoral Commission will be doing this very, very important exercise. I want to beg you and urge you that this is a sacred call that all of us go and write our names in the voters register so that come December 7th, we will be part of the history-making process that it is this generation, it is this generation, that voted for a visionary to become the next president of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Let's do that, and this country would be a better and a great place to be for myself and you. Your Excellency, this is homecoming for myself, as this is my alma mater, UDS War Campus, now UBIT. So I am an old boy. Prof, I salute you. Choboy. Choboy. For all of us young people here, I want to urge you again that the elections in December is one of the most crucial in the history of this country. Why is it? It is because we are presented with two choices that myself and you have to make. A choice that will take us either forward or a choice 
that will take us backwards. A choice between the future and a choice between the past. A choice that will ensure that your future is guaranteed or a choice that would put your future in disarray and disbelief, despair and disillusionment. That is why I believe that all of us, we should be conscious, we should be very, very interested in the December polls because it affects myself and you. Young, young people, myself and you, the great countries we see, the China, Malaysia, Singapore, Dubai, United States of America, Canada, UK, they did not get to where they are by accident. They got to where they are through visionary leadership. Leaders who were ready to sacrifice for their country. Leaders who were thinkers for their country. And that is why myself and you also, we have a choice who represents a thinker, a visionary, a hard worker in the person of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who will make Ghana a better place for myself and you. Choboy, Choboy, I can tell you that when you read about the Liu Kuan Yung's, the Xi Jinping's, and all the people who have made difference in their countries, the Al Maktoum's of Dubai, they didn't do so by magic, they did so by hard work and vision. And I can tell you that this man that I am talking about, is one of the visionaries this country has produced. I know him. I can attest to the goodness in him. And I know that if we vote for him, he will not let this country down. But he will work very hard to ensure that our problems are dealt with. I want to see a leader who can guarantee you a job place when you finish school. I want to see a leader who, when we put the resources of this state, would not steal, but use it in the best interest of the people. I want to see a leader who thinks about the tomorrow. I want to see a leader who is prepared to sacrifice all his interests to ensure that this country is well and able and capable of taking care of its citizens. And that person is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Choboy, Choboy, I can assure you that this person, I know him. I know him so well because I've worked with him for years now. He is pro-youth. He is for the youth. He works for the youth. And I can tell you, if we vote for this person, myself and you, we will be proud of the choice we are going to make come December 7th this year. I know that there are difficulties in our country. Nobody can take that away. It is so across the world. Everywhere you go, the Chinese, Americans, UK, Germany, all experiencing significant economic crisis but who can you trust who is the leader that is able to steer the state the steer of state to a better place and i can tell you without a competent leader without a visionary leader we will not get to the canaan we are looking for we will not get to the land of honey and milk and i know that if we vote for dr mahmoud baumia he will do right he will do well for this country, for myself and you to have a better place in our own country of birth. That is why I am going to introduce to you the next leader that will change the face of this country and ensure that myself and you benefit from our own country, myself and you succeed in our own motherland. And this person is no other person but the visionary, Dr. Mahmoudou. Baumia, with a big round of applause. Let's welcome him to the stage. Thank you. thank you, thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor is here, Regional Minister, Ministers of State. 
members of parliament, our nursing trainees are also here. I want to welcome each and every one of you students from UDS are here and this is the Youth Forum, the Youth Connect. I'm so excited to be in the Upper West region today. I come to you as the presidential candidate for the new patriotic party. And as I am going around the country to ask for the support of the country for my presidential bid. I come to you to tell you to look at my story and understand that it is possible. I, growing up, I have been a by-day worker before on a farm. When I went to London, I was a taxi driver to help me with my studies. When I went to Canada, I was cleaning dormitories to help me with my studies. But today, by the grace of God, I stand before you as Vice President of the Republic of Ghana and Presidential Candidate of the New Patriotic Party. It is possible. It is possible. Let nobody tell you that it is not possible. We can reach for the skies. As a country, we can do what the advanced countries have done. We can be the best as individuals. Let nobody tell you that it is not possible. Recently, I mean just about within the last two weeks, Prempe Boys College won the World Robotics Competition. World, the whole world robotics competition. Mamfi Girls Methodist School a couple of years ago also won the world robotics competition. These are African countries. We are Ghana and we are already at this stage winning world robotic competitions for senior high schools. It tells you that it is possible. The world today is moving towards the fourth industrial revolution. The global economy today is becoming a digital economy. And I am very clear in my mind that Ghana will not be left behind in this digital economy. We are going to step up toe to toe with the advanced economies and match them in our participation in the fourth industrial revolution. The critical foundational pillar for digital transformation is digital identity. And this is why the European Union, the EU, has asked all the EU countries to make sure they issue their citizens with digital ID cards by the year 2030. But guess what? Ghana, we have already issued our population with digital ID cards by the year 2024. We have already done so. We have issued 17.6 million Ghana cards. 17.6 million and this year we are going to start issuing the Ghana card IDs to the students in primary and secondary schools and today if you give birth to a child in Ghana whether it's in Jirapa or Laura or Wa and you take that child for way in that child is going to be given a Ghana card ID number and a birth certificate 
number at the same time. This is what happens abroad. And in fact, we have gone ahead of what they are doing. That is progress that we are making. Today, our Ghana card has been linked to the International Civil Aviation Organization platform. It means that your Ghana card is very valuable. It is internationally recognized. If you go abroad today and your passport gets missing, you can take your Ghana card and board a plane and come back to Ghana. And that is really very special. I'm not saying you can take it and travel out of Ghana. We haven't reached there yet. But when you are out of Ghana, you can take the Ghana card and board a flight and come back to Ghana. That is what is really transformational for us. Today, the Ghana card is allowing us to check corruption. Allowing us to check corruption. The ghost workers on the public payrolls have been eliminated because the Ghana card requires fingerprints. We said that we are going to link every worker to a Ghana card. And guess what? Once we said that, it meant that ghosts don't have fingerprints. They all run away. And we saved so much money. And the National Service Scheme alone, 44,000 ghost workers were eliminated. In SNIT, 19,000 ghost workers. Together, savings of 700 million Ghana cities by eliminating these ghost workers. And so you are seeing that the introduction of the Ghana card. Ghana is amongst a few countries in the world that have successfully implemented digital IDs. And that is very, very remarkable. When you move forward with the Ghana card, we are going to introduce something very unique by the grace of God when I'm elected as president next year. Today, if you want to apply for a passport, you have to go online or get the form and fill it. But what, we are pro what I'm promising you is that all the information that you need for a passport is also already on your Ghana card. So we are bringing in a new policy. If you have a Ghana card, you don't need to separately go and do an application for a passport. Just give your Ghana card number, pay your fee, and they will print your passport for you. And that is the end of the application process. Another problem that we had when we came into office that I championed was to bring an address system to Ghana. We didn't have an address system. You had to go to the Coco Cellar, turn right, and go to the Blue House, turn left, and the tree and all of that, landmarks. But today, we have leveraged the GPS and made sure every location in Ghana, on, on land or on water, has a digital address. And that means that you can do e-commerce and everything. So we have a digital address system, and Ghana is only the second country in the whole world that has got a digital address system. The whole world. We have now also moved on to introduce uh, mobile money interoperability. When we came in, you couldn't send Momo from Vodafone to MTN or from Tigo to Vodafone. You couldn't. You couldn't send Momo uh, from money from your Momo account into a bank account or from a bank account into a Momo account. There was no interoperability of that nature and we decided to make it happen. And today you can send money from your Momo account to your bank account, from your bank account to your Momo account,
from one telco to the other, you can receive remittances from abroad onto your mobile phone before you had to go to Western Union. Mobile money interoperability, we have made it happen. And Ghana was the first country in the whole of Africa to implement mobile money interoperability that we are enjoying today. Today, we are brought in medical drones to deliver medicines. The drones, the zipline drones, are delivering medicines to 2,800 facilities. Very soon, a drone center will be opened in the Upper West region. It will be located at Funsi, and it will cover the Upper West region. And we are going to see a 100% coverage of all the, the, the country. We just have two more centers and we'll cover. But we are saving all so many lives every day with the drones going and delivering medicines, blood, vaccines across. But what I want to say is that in this area of technology, currently Ghana has the largest medical drone delivery service in the whole world. In the whole world, we are leading in medical drone delivery service. The whole world. A few months ago, the company in San Francisco came to recruit a Ghanaian to go and lead a team in San Francisco on drone flight operations. And that is, tells you that we have a, a lot of experience in our drone industry in Ghana. We also moved on to make sure that there was a problem in our hospitals. You go and it was all manual. You have, they have to find your folder to get your medical information. And if you are not lucky, your folder will be missing. So we decided to digitalize all the patient records and also to network the hospitals. So far, we have completed the networking of all the teaching hospitals, all the regional hospitals, all the district hospitals. And we have also made sure that the patient's information in all of these hospitals have been digitalized. We are going to continue all of it and finish including the CHIPS compounds by the end of next year so that all our health facilities will all be digitalized by the end of next year. So today, if you are in Funsi or you are in Jirapa or you are in Laura and they transfer you to the WA Regional Hospital, you don't need to bring your folder along because they already have your medical records in the system. And you just bring your ID and we will find it on the computer. If they transfer you from Wa to Kolebu, you don't need to take your folder. Just take your ID. When you get to Kolebu, they will knock it into the system and all your medical records will appear in Kolebu for you. This is digital transformation and making life easier for our people. Today, you can register for your national health insurance or renew your national health insurance on your mobile phone. You don't need to go anywhere. You can buy electricity on your mobile phone. This didn't used to be the case. So we are saving so much in time and money and paying of bribes. We are making all of that uh, redundant and we are making sure people can access government services very very freely and easily so we, we if you look at what we have done uh, in the area of digitalization it has been massive and I have in my capacity as vice president led all of these digital initiatives then you, you move on. I have led the initiative to bring one constituency, one ambulance to Ghana. I've led the initiative to bring Agenda 111 
to Ghana. Right now, we are building 111 hospitals, and by the end of next year, we are going to complete almost all of them. And for our nurses who have not been recruited, who are staying at home, in August, we are giving clearance this August for the recruitment of nurses. For the recruitment of nurses and, and all of the Agenda 111 hospitals are going to also need more nurses. So we are going to be recruiting more health personnel to get into the, the hospitals. And that is going to be very, very important. I've championed the Zongo Development Fund and we are helping a lot of people in the Zongo communities. Tomorrow, I've, I championed the empowerment of Kaya Yees to move them into skills training and hostel facilities. We've built a 600, two uh, hostels, 600 bed capacity to train our Kaya Ye, to give them skills. And tomorrow we are launching those uh, facilities for the Kaya Ye. There are more facilities that have been built in Kumasi and they will also soon be launched. And so we are, we are championing a course for all of these. So if you look at my performance um, as a vice president, and I've just mentioned just a few of those things, you'll see that I have been very focused on helping solve problems, have been a problem solver. When we came into office, one of the first things the president asked me was that, Mahamadu, can we do free senior high school this year? That was in 2017. I said, Mr. President, if it is your priority, we can do free senior high school this year and we'll put it in the budget. And we did free senior high school in 2017. And what is so remarkable about free senior high school education is the increase in numbers and the increase in quality. When we came into office, the total enrollment of free senior high school students was 800,000. 800,000. That is between 1957 and 2016, 60 years, Ghana had 800,000 students after 60 years. Between 2017 and 2023, the number has increased from 800,000 to 1.4 million students in the senior high school. So you've had 800,000 as a, after 60 years of independence and just after seven years of senior high school education you've added another 600,000 after six years compared to 800,000 after 60 years so that tells you that the demand was there but people could not really afford to go and this is why we are going to senior high school but what is also very very remarkable about the increase in enrollment for the senior high school is that the largest increases in enrollment in senior high school education is coming from the five northern regions the top five regions out of the 16 are all from the northern regions the top five of the 16 are all from the northern regions that is from between 89% to 94% enrollment. And this is telling you that the poorer regions are the ones who are more eager, who are benefiting the more in senior high school education. And this is what the whole policy is about, to expand opportunities to all the poorer segments of our population. But what is even more interesting is that more girls are now enrolling in senior high school than boys. In 2016, for every 100 boys in senior high school, you had 68 girls. Today, 
for every 100 boys in senior high school, you will have 106 girls. So the girls have surpassed the boys in senior high school. And that is a very good thing for the development of our nation. Today in Accra, the middle class is complaining because they cannot find mates mates in their household because parents have taken all the girls and they put them in senior high school and that is a good thing that we are experiencing but what is even more remarkable normally when you expand education and access quality comes down that is the normal trajectory but in fact for Ghana's case quality has gone up the performance of the students at the WAXI exams has improved. The top six subjects of students' pass rate has gone up from 45% to 64%. And that is very, very remarkable. So we have really done a lot in the senior high school education. And very recently, we have launched one student, one tablet in the senior high school to help our students. We, Ghana, we are the only country, only country in the whole of Africa to do one student, one tablet. And this is what we are trying to do to move this country to the edge of the fourth industrial revolution. We are doing what even the advanced countries are not doing. I went and visited with the Prime Minister of Estonia and he was telling me, she was telling me, that they have tried to do one student, one tablet, but they have not yet done it. And so I was telling her, we are going to do it in Ghana. And we have done it in Ghana. We, we, so we are doing a lot in the education sector. We are going to pay a little bit more attention going forward to the basic education, to improving infrastructure, and so on. But that is where we are going. We have also invested because of the youth and the skills acquisition we have invested hugely in tvet education because we want to build skills tvet is key in the global uh, world of work now and so we have invested over the last seven years six billion ghana cities in tvet education and we have increased uh, the, the equipment we have brought them to state-of-the-art level in the existing 34 NVTIs, the 13 colleges, technical colleges, and the 10 technical universities. We have really increased the state of giving them state-of-the-art equipment. And in addition, we have added free TVET education. And that has increased enrollment from 60,000 to 159,000. This is more than double, uh, getting to triple of students in the TVET sector. And this is what is really helping uh, Ghana. We are building skills in, in going forward. So in the education segment, we are really powering through to do what we have to do to help the, the, the country. So if you look at what I have been able to do as vice president so far, I can list about 33 different policy initiatives in my limited capacity as vice president that have either initiated or championed to see through implementation, paperless port, digitalization of the passport office, and, and so on. Ghana.gov, e-pharmacy, and all of that. So many uh, policies. E-pharmacy has just been completed. We have all the pharmacies in Ghana on one platform. All the pharmacies in Ghana. So now, if a doctor gives you a prescription, you don't have to sit down and worry and start visiting different pharmacies to see which one has your prescription. No. Go to the e-pharmacy platform upload your prescription it will tell you which pharmacy near you has the drug and it will give you a comparison of the prices of the various drugs and you will go and order it from the pharmacy that you need 
We are the first country in Africa to implement a national scale e-pharmacy. And we are one of the few countries in the world to do this. So Ghana, we are not stepping back. We are making sure we are ahead of the more advanced countries in the things that we are doing. And so we are making sure that we derive all these benefits. So ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I can tell you as vice president that I have championed and initiated 33 policies. That tells you that given my limited authority as vice president, if I can champion all of these and successfully implement them as vice president, it tells you that if you vote for me to become president, I can do more than that. I will do more than that for Ghana. I will do more than that if you vote for me to become president. I know I have my opponent who wants to also be president again. But if you ask my opponent to name one policy intervention, one that he did as vice president, he will not be able to name one, just one. I can name 33. The score is 33-0 for now. And let us continue counting. I have a vision for this country. I believe that we can, we can beat the world. I believe that we need to pay attention to various key areas to transform this country. First of all, I think that agriculture, agriculture holds the key to eliminating poverty and to reducing the cost of living. I am committed to agriculture. The North has water. The North has land. Savannah, North East, Upper East, Upper West, Northern region, these are land vast countries, huge uh, vast regions huge land mass that we have. I believe that we can be the breadbasket of Ghana and the breadbasket of West Africa. I want agriculture to be transformed from the small scale agriculture that we are doing now to large scale mechanized agriculture with irrigation and application of technology, soil science, satellite data to make agriculture more precision farming, more predictable farming, so that we can de-risk that environment and make farmers more able to get a lot of productivity out of agriculture. So agriculture is going to be one of the key areas that I want to focus on as a president of this country. I want to also reduce the cost of living, first of all, by bringing down the cost of electricity. I want to do that by moving away from generating electricity with imported fuel to generating electricity, electricity with solar power. I want Ghana to move to solar power. Let us stop wasting scarce forex on importing fuel to generate electricity. God has given us the sun for free. We are going to implement and inject into the grid 2,000 megawatts of solar power in the next four years. 2,000 megawatts of solar power. And that means we are bringing in solar power to take care of half our electricity consumption. That will bring down the cost of electricity by about 50% and make industry more competitive. But if we are going to generate 2,000 megawatts, it means there are going to be a lot of solar panels. I don't want us to be importing all those solar panels. So we are going to set up factories here to start producing solar panels so that we will create jobs and use them to make the electricity at the same time. We'll do that. So that is very, very key that will create the jobs with solar panels and bring down the cost of electricity. The third area that I want to really bring a big change 
is in the area of our tax system. I want to bring a new tax system into Ghana. The current tax system is very complicated. And I want to bring the, mo the most tax competitive system in the world into Ghana. The last couple of years, I've been studying tax systems around the world. I found out that the most tax competitive country in the whole world, the last 10 years in a row, is Estonia. Estonia. This is why I took a team and went to Estonia to understudy their tax system. It is a flat rate tax system, just as for those who go to church, it's a tight, like 10% is 10%. Flat rate tax system is very transparent and it is very efficient to collect and you can cover everybody and there is very little kululu you can do. And so the tax, flat rate tax system is what I want to introduce in Ghana in 2025. And to get it started properly, I want everybody to start on a clean slate. So I'm going to offer a tax amnesty in 2025 to all businesses, all individuals, so that we all start from a clean slate. So that will be a major boost to businesses and individuals, and we will start that way. The second thing I'm going to do is to look at our import duty system and bring some predictability in the import duty system. So right now, a lot of our uh, importers, they find the duties very unpredictable. You can order something, it is on the way, you think you are paying 10,000 Ghana cities. When it arrives, you are paying 15,000. I want us to bring in a flat rate system on import duty so that there is predictability in cities. If you are bringing in 40 foot container of rice, we should know how much you are going to pay. It should be predictable. If it's a 20 foot container, it should be clear. If you are bringing in spare parts, 40 foot container, it should be clear. So that once there's predictability, traders wouldn't be increasing prices rampantly in the market. The second part I'm going to make sure to realign the import duty is to make sure that the smuggling that is taking place from Togo to Ghana stops. Right now, because our import duties are higher than that of Togo, people send containers to Togo, they clear them and smuggle them into Ghana. What I'm going to do is to benchmark the import duty to that of Togo. The new policy will be that Ghana import duty cannot be higher than Togo import duty. It will be lower or it will be the same. And once that is the case, there will be no incentive for anybody to go and smuggle through Togo to come to Ghana. And this is where we are going. We want to create jobs for the youth. We want to create jobs for the youth. So the jobs are in the digital uh, uh, age today. We want to prepare our youth. You, in the digital age, you need digital skills. You need to be skilled in coding, in software development, in software engineering. So I want to train one million youth in digital skills. The thing about digital skills is that you don't need a degree or a certificate to be trained in digital skills. You need to be able to read and write. If you can read and write, we can trade you. We can train you to be a coder, to be a software developer, to be a software engineer. It's just training and we can do that. I want to train a million people. You don't have to work in Ghana. You can be sitting here in Nandom or in Laura or in Wa and be working in Germany, in Australia on your laptop and be earning money. That is the nature of the world today. You don't have to travel there to work. On your computer, you can be doing a lot of work for other people. So that is where we are going. We're doing that. We want to enhance tourism. We want to enhance the creative arts. We want to enhance the pharmaceutical industry. We want to enhance our investment in the sports industry. These are all growth pools. These are all areas where we are going to create jobs to make sure 
that our people will get those jobs to do. In the area of persons with disabilities, as I said, we are, go uh, we are going to also help persons with disabilities. I want us to employ a thousand special needs teachers, special needs teachers in our basic schools and senior high schools, a thousand of them, so that we can help children with special needs. I also want to bring in a policy of free tertiary education for persons with disabilities. They will be able to have tertiary education for free under my administration so that we can get them to, because they have a much harder time than the rest of us, but they are as sharp as any of us as far as the, the, their brilliance is concerned. So we have to, to encourage and encourage them to go further in tertiary education and beyond tertiary education we have to introduce certain quotas in public recruitment to bring in persons with disabilities so that they become also a part of the workforce and not if we don't do the affirmative action there we are not going to 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 make a lot of uh, progress one major policy i'm going to bring is the policy of bringing more of the private sector to help government. Right now, government is trying to do too much, but the private sector is the key to helping government. Right now, government wants to build all the infrastructure in our schools, but they don't have enough money. Government wants to buy all the buses for the schools, but they don't have enough money to buy all of them at the same time. So my policy is to empower the private sector, reduce government expenditure, and increase private sector expenditure. When you go to Legon, you go to Tech, all the hostels are not built by government. They are built by the private sector. We can do the same across our schools. We have so many uncompleted projects. But you can tell the private sector, look, if you build this school, if you build this dormitory, we will rent it from you for the next so many years. Once they know they will get money from building that infrastructure, they will quickly finish it. And Get Fund doesn't have to use all of its resources to build that. They can be paying a little, a little, a little. That is a credit system, and it works. And this is where we should go. So when I come in, no school will be without a bus. No school will have... Uncompleted project. We will let the private sector complete all the projects and we'll pay them. It will be much less burdensome, less burdensome on the government budget and more effective. And we'll finish a lot of projects. So I intend to reduce government expenditure by between 3 and 5 percent of GDP, bring it down by about 30 billion Ghana cities, and let the private sector take over that expenditure to reduce interest rates, will reduce taxes, will reduce the deficit. And this is where we are going. I have one major new policy that is coming, and, but that one, it has come quickly, so it's going to be introduced this year. You know, when you look abroad, a lot of people usually want to go abroad because the standard of living of workers abroad is higher than ours. But why is the standard of living higher? First of all, if you are a nurse and you are being paid a thousand dollars in America, you will be able to spend up to ten thousand dollars, even though you are paid a thousand. Why? Because there's a credit system. They'll give you credit so that you can pay small, small at the end of each month. But if you are in Ghana and you pay you a thousand CDs, <laughs> you are stuck with your thousand CDs. There is no credit system that allows you to spend 10,000 CDs. The credit system has not developed here, but has developed overseas because they have a database that allows them to calculate individual credit scores, individual credit scoring. So every individual who lives in the developed world has a credit score. 
but we don't have that in Ghana. So that is why we are not able to develop a credit system. And that is why over the last few years, I have been pushing to put in place a database, a framework, an architecture that allows us to do individual credit scoring in Ghana. And I wrote a book on this in 2010. This is 14 years ago, before I became vice president, on how African countries needed to build this system to be able to do credit scoring for their citizens. Otherwise, our standard of living will continue to be low. But the good news, the good news, the good news is that we have been able to complete the work on the individual credit system. And this year, in the next few months, we will launch uh, the individual credit scoring for all Ghanaians. If you have a Ghana card, you can go and check your credit score when it is launched. And with that, people will be willing to give you credit because they know if you have a good credit score, you can repay. Today, they lump all of us together. We are all bad. So we don't get credit and we get high interest rates. But something new is coming to Ghana. Ghana will be the only the second country after South Africa in Africa to have an individual score credit scoring system that I am aware of. So let us uh, look forward to it. But once we implement it, then the standard of living of workers should go up. You will be able, your consumption possibilities will be higher. So my brothers and sisters, uh, I, I am so happy to share with you some of my thoughts. Of course, the time limitations are such that I cannot mention everything. The manifesto will be coming. But I want you to believe and to know that if you vote for me as president, I am going to work hard. I'm going to work hard night and day. I'm going to make sure that we have change. We have positive change that we talk about. I'm going to make sure we have transformation of Ghana in my term, that we implement some major transformational policies. The contest is between me and my opponent, my main opponent. My main opponent, as you know, he has been president before. So we know his handwriting. We, we know what he did as president. He failed. So we voted him out in 2016. He came back again. We voted him out again. But he doesn't want to listen. He wants to come back again. So we should vote him out again so that he will go and rest, uh, and, and rest very, very well. The people are giving you a message, but you are not listening. So for me, I have never been president before. I have only been vice president, isn't it? I have never been president before. But you have seen my handwriting as vice president. You have seen my, what I can do as vice president. And what is even more important is that if you vote for my opponent, he only has four years. He won't come back to you again. After he goes on his honeymoon, he will not come back. He has only four years. He, you, the next, you won't see him again. No. But as for me, if you vote for me, I will be looking to govern for eight years. It means I have to perform well and come back to you in four years' time and ask for your vote. So I'm going to work hard for you to give me your vote in four years' time. As for my opponent, once you vote for him, it will be bye-bye. You will see him again. So it is better for you to vote for me. I've proven I can do the work. So hand me the steer of the vehicle. Let me drive the vehicle. Give me the steer and let me take the vehicle and we go down the road. I want you on this note to introduce the PC for our central constituency.
Honorable Humu Audu, please support her. Let her come to Parliament. Come and join all our MPs so that we govern properly together. She will do excellent for War Central. Help her. Help us. Thank you very, very much. I just also want to give assurance to our nursing trainees that we are, we are working, um, I have taken this personal, we are working very hard on your allowance. I want to stop all the delays in the payment of your allowances and you will see that happen this year, not next year, but we are going to make sure there is regularity in the payment of your allowances. So just be patient. We'll solve it all for you, and, and, and we are actually meeting tomorrow on it. So just be patient. We'll get it done for you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>